Where did my images go? No worry, let's rescue those images. Welcome to How to Power BI. My name is Bas, and if this is the very first time for you visiting this channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button. If you want to stay up to date on all of my videos in which I share everything I know about Power BI. So you want to show images on your Power BI report. Now, the most standard way of doing this is by using an image URL so that you store your images, let's say on a server or on OneDrive, and you point to those images so that Power BI can retrieve them and show them on your report. So as an example, I have a table over here with different products, and for each product, we have an image URL in the image column. Now I can go to the report and create a table, and on this table, I'm going to use the name and the image URL. Now, if I leave it like this, well, it just shows the URL itself, but we don't want to show the URL, we want to retrieve the image. Now, to do that, we have to make sure that we select the image URL field, then go to column tools, data category, and there we have to set it to image URL. And as soon as you do that, it will retrieve the images and show them in your table. And that's it, now that all works perfectly fine until the image URL changes because maybe the images are stored in a different location or maybe you just simply don't have any internet while you're looking at the report in Power BI Desktop. And then what you see is, well, just a placeholder for these images, which is of course not so pretty. So that is the big disadvantage of using this approach. And of course, it's also a question, where are you going to store these images and how can you easily retrieve the image URLs themselves? Now, as an alternative, we can also take these images and encode them as text and store that inside of our data model. And Power BI will be able to show images on the basis of that encoded text. Now let me show you how that works. Now, let's say we have our images in a folder. Now this folder can be on your laptop, but can also be on a shared network drive or on SharePoint. Now we're going to connect to the folder. Now in my case, it's on my laptop. So just select folder, click on connect, choose the folder with the images, click OK, and then we can click on transform data. And that brings us to Power Query. Now here we have an overview of all of the images inside of the folder. Now, in case you have also other files stored in the same folder or images that you actually don't want to use on the Power BI report, then filter those out. Now, the way to do that is just to go here to the extension column. I would usually first lowercase them so that we don't have to worry about lowercase, uppercase, and then put the filter in place. So in this case, I want to keep all JPEGs and PNG files. So that's fine. Click OK. And now we have only those images that we actually want to use. Now, the next thing is to get rid of the columns that we are not going to use. So I only want to keep the content column, the name of the image column, and the rest I'm going to remove. And now you see here in the first column, we have binary, binary, binary. Now, if you click in the blank space right next to it, then you see at the bottom the actual file name and how big the file is. Now, the problem is Power BI cannot just take these binary files and show them as images. That's why before we had the image URL. However, what we can do is to encode the binary file to text and then tell Power BI that that encoded text is an image and then it will show as an image. Now, how to do that? Well, there is a function binary to text that we can use. Now, if you have no clue what a function does, then what you can do is first go to new source and then choose blank query and just type an equal sign with the name of the function. Now, in this case, it's binary to text. Now here it is, select it, press enter, gives you a description, returns the result of converting a binary list of numbers binary into a text value. And the important part is also over here, we have the arguments. So the first part is the easy part, the binary, okay? So that's in the content column of our table. The second part, there we need to say what the encoding standard is that needs to be used. Now in this case, it is common to use base64 encoding that we can then use as a second argument. All right, so now that we have this figured out, we can go back to the table. And here we're going to add a new column, custom column, give the column a nice name, so image. And then here we can write the formula. And the formula is going to be binary to text. Now there you go. Then bracket open. Now the first argument was the binary itself, which is every time in the content column. 
comma. Then the second part, there the encoding standard, which was the base64 encoding that we could use. And you see, as soon as I start typing encoding, uh, popped up over here. That is the standard that we want to use. Close the brackets. And now let's click on OK and see what it does. Now, it gives you a big text string that is basically representing the image as text. All right, now let's leave it like this and let's see what happens when we use that column for our images. So I'm going to click on apply. And now I'm going to take that table from before. I'm going to remove the original name and image column. Now let's go to our table and let's first rename it quickly. So these are our product images. And there we have image and name. Now before you're going to add the fields to your table, you want to make sure that you take the image encoded image text column, then go to column tools, data category, and then say over here, image URL. Now, why is this important? Because these text strings for these encoded images is very long. If you add that to your table, it's going to take ages. You have to wait and wait and wait until Power BI is done. So make sure that you do this first and then add it to the table. All right. So we have the name, we have the image and it doesn't work. Why is it not working? Well, because we forgot one important thing. Let's go back to Power Query. And I'm going to go to our query where we added the custom column. I'm going to edit it. And there we have to put a constant text right before the encoded image text. Now, it's going to be constant. So therefore, quotation mark, quotation mark. And then to combine it later with the rest, an ampersand sign. Now, in between the quotation marks, you have to add the following. Data, then colon, image then semicolon, and then base64 is the encoding standard, comma space, and that's it. Let's click on OK, cross our fingers, and hope it works. So I'm going to go back, click on Apply, and you see, there we have our images. Or, well, more or less, because over here, card number two, hmm, we only see half of the image, and card number three is almost not visible at all, only the top of the roof, that's it. But for the other ones, it works. But what is going on with car number two and car number three? Now here we have still a problem with those two images because of the following reason. Let's have a look at the table. And here we have the image column with the encoded images. And the text of these encoded images is quite long. And the maximum length is only 32,000 characters. And if you have a high quality picture, well, it's going to have more characters. So the higher the quality of the images, the longer the encoded text will be. And if it goes over 32,000, well, you have a problem because it just cuts it off and you only see part of the image, the top part. All right, so what is the workaround and how can we make this work? Well, the workaround is to make sure that your images are not over a certain size. So in our case, we have a problem with card number three and card number two. So let's have a look in our file explorer how big these images are. So straight away for car number three, you see what the problem is. We have one and a half MB in size. And for all of the other ones, we have a size of around 20 to 30 KB, which is a huge difference. And another thing that you might notice is that for car number three, well, it's a PNG file and PNG files generally are a little bit bigger than JPEGs. So therefore, if you can, store them as JPEGs. And then for card number two, well, you see that the size is more or less the same. However, still it was cutting off a little bit of from the bottom. And actually for the other ones, it's also not showing the entire image. It's just the lower part of the image was white. So therefore you didn't clearly see it over there. Now, how do you know if the size is small enough? Well, what we can do is we can just add a column and count the number of characters. So I'm going to add a column to show you. And here I can name this column text length and then use the length function and we refer to the image column. And you see for most of the images, we have an encoded text string that has more than 32,766 characters, but it gets cut off. However, it's not very visible because for most of these images, the lower part is white. So we were kind of lucky with these images that we chose. However, not good. We have to make sure that we end up with a text length that is a little bit smaller. Now, what can we do to get this text length for these encoded images a little bit lower? Well, we can, well, decrease the file size. Now, first of all, I usually go, would go for JPEGs because they're generally a little bit smaller. And on top of that, we can compress the images. Now, let me walk you through the steps, taking card number three.png as an example. So I go here to my file explorer and I open card three.png. 
You see, beautiful color. And now we can, first of all, resize it so that the resolution is a little bit lower because we don't need super good quality because the images are, well, kind of small how I show them on my report. It doesn't have to be super high quality. So I go for a little bit lower resolution. So let's call this one low resolution. And you see that already makes a huge difference because instead of having one and a half MB, we have now 172 KB. All right, but we can do better because it's still not enough. We need to be in the range of 20 to 25. So I need to compress it further. Now for that, there are so many different tools. However, if you want to have an easy one to get started, well, just use the website. So as an example, I go here to compressnow.com and here we can drop one or more images. Now, in this case, I just take card number three as an example. I'm going to use that low resolution picture, just drop it on there, upload it, and now we can choose how much we want to compress it. Now, again, we are, uh, we are aiming for something like 20 to 25 KB. That's fine, the smaller the better. Depends a little bit on what quality you still need. Compress it, download it, and then put that inside of the folder instead of the original one. Or keep the original ones and create a new folder like you do in this example. So I have over here all of the compressed images inside of a new folder. I kept the original ones. You see the sizes are much smaller for all of them. And now I just have to update my query so that we point it to the compressed folder. All right, so I go back to Power Query, update the source, and now instead of the original column, I'm going to refer to the compressed column. Now everything else stays as it is. Just apply the changes, go back, make sure that it refreshes. And then you see in the table, we have now a text length that's always smaller than that 32,000 something cutoff point. So that's good. Then I go to the report view, and ta -da, we have all of the images beautifully showing and I don't see any quality difference because the pictures are so small anyways. Now, if you really would need to show them in a larger size, okay, then uh, you might see the difference. But even then, well, the compressed images don't look that bad. If I open up card number three and show it a little bit bigger, you see, it's still kind of okay. Okay, so that was the main trick, but what if you need to do this on a regular basis? then it probably makes sense to turn this into a custom function. Now, let me show you quickly how to do that. I go back to Power Query and I'm going to create a new blank query. So here we have the basic structure for our query, which we are going to use as a custom function. And you notice we have a let and an int statement. This lets us break down the query into multiple steps. And we have over here a first step, source, and the output, source. Now, the important part is what we are going to do. Well, the formula we wrote before. So we can just copy it over here into query two. Now let me do that. I go back to product images, then go to the added custom step. And then I just copy over here this part, the formula here in the middle, in between the brackets, control C, go back to query number two, advanced editor. And I just paste it in after source equals two. Then here, instead of source, well, we are returning image. And that also needs to follow that after the int statement. Now, this is going to be used as a function, which means that the input might not always be at the content column as we have it in this case. So we need an input parameter, which we can define at the beginning. So we have the image binary as binary. Okay, so that's the input parameter. Now the file type, the data type is binary, and the output is going to be, well, over here we will have text as an output. Then we follow this by a goes to operator, and then we just have to update here the reference to the content column, so that it is not static, and that's why we're creating that function, and we replace it with the image binary. There it is. Click on done, and then we can give this function also a nice name. So over here on the properties, we can rename this one to uh, binary to image. So now that we have the function, we go back to our original query, product images. And instead of having here this added custom column, I'm going to remove this. Then we're going to add a column, but now we're going to use that function. So invoke the custom function. Now the new column name is going to be image, just like we had before. And then the function that we want to use is going to be, well, the binary to image. Now, where are our images? In the content column. 
click OK. And there you go. We have exactly the same result as before. You might be wondering why would you do this then? Well, because if this is something that you do on a regular basis, then you probably don't want to uh, retype this formula over and over again and try to remember. But instead, you just copy over this custom function, use that instead much quicker. Now, the next question that you might have is, what if I don't have my images in a folder, but maybe I have them, well, as a URL and I want to encode those images? Well, it's just a small change that we have to make. The idea stays exactly the same. So I can just take that function that we wrote before. Let me just duplicate it. And then we are going to create another one and we call this one URL to image. And then I'm going to go to view, open the advanced editor. And the only thing that basically changes is the input. Now we don't have a binary column then because as we had with the folder connector, but instead we're going to have URLs. So we can say, okay, we have an input, which is going to be a URL, which is not going to be the binary yet. So this is going to be text. And then over here, what we need to change is, well, the binaries that we get from uh, the content column before, well, this part we want to change. And this is going to be web.contents because we still have to fetch those binary files. And then where are these binary files? Well, we just follow the URL, which is the parameter that we defined for the function. And click on done. And that's it. You see, it follows exactly the same logic. So this is how you can take your images and store them as text inside of your data model so that you don't have to be worried about broken links or where to store your images. Now, if you have any questions, just let me know in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching. I see you in the next video.